Many might say this is an international development issue and, and less a climate change issue. Why confuse negotiations, which are already tortuous in some respects, even further by bringing in another issue? No, you cannot separate these issues. If you are going to uh, try to decrease the poverty or combat poverty, so you need economic growth, hopefully green growth, and then the big issue is what kind of energy you are going to use for the growth. And then we can immediately, you combine energy with climate. So you cannot separate these issues. And in terms of the talks at COP17, obviously a lot of focus will be on uh, issues such as the second commitment periods of Kyoto and the Green Climate Fund. In terms of gender issues, how do you see those, uh, those negotiations panning out? And is there, is there anything you have seen already that gives you, gives you hope? Uh, I think that uh, from the gender point of view, there would be three main is issues which will come for a very high priority, and those are funding, technology transfer, and capacity building. Uh, because in order to empower women to take action in adaptation, for instance, in agriculture, or what, taking care of the water resources, you would need, in addition to information and education, you would need money. It's the money which decides the development and you would need also proper technology and in particularly the women would need also capacity building in their efforts and but there I, I see a great progress because uh, uh, we have come here to convince that that uh, we need a solution here in Durban to start the work of the three new important mechanisms. So the funding mechanism, the green fund, and also the technology mechanism. And then uh, the third new body is the adaptation committee. And, and in all these issues, capacity building is related. So that uh, there are proposals also concerning the uh, role of women in, in these issues. and. Uh, uh, we have made our proposals, various delegations, including the European Union and, and many uh, developing countries, so Africa Group and the least developed countries, more developing islands. And uh, we, we have not heard any objection, so we are now just waiting for the final solutions. Do gender issues affect just developing countries or are there still plenty of issues to be resolved in developed countries, say, for example, the European Union? Oh, uh, naturally, we have, have a great opportunity in Europe and then also more widely in developed countries uh, to make an impact on changing the consumption patterns. Because uh, in accordance with OECD studies, 80% uh, of the daily uh, purchasing decisions of families are done by women. Mm -hmm. And so women can take the lead uh, to lead us to more greener development and greener consumption. Uh, Boston University has also done recently some estimates that by the year 2014, uh, we would have something like uh, 15 trillion US dollars available annually uh, for the purchasing decisions of women. And if you compare that uh, figure, for instance, wow. with the development cooperation aid, which is going uh, across the border, so it's far more bigger economic, uh, let's say, uh, factor. And we have to pay serious attention to this. And that is the responsibility of developed countries, women, to show the example. And obviously, at the moment, economic problems are affecting, uh, well, mainly, mainly the Eurozone, but uh, all around the world. It seems to me you're suggesting that actually in the long run, if you manage to bring uh, the education of women in the developed, de developing world 
up to a par with everyone else, you'll actually be saving a lot of money in the long run. And economically, it makes absolute sense. Yeah, a lot of money, but also a lot of natural resources mm. to, to have more efficient and uh, environmentally sound uh, energy systems and use less uh, material in production processes. So it would have great impacts indeed. And you see, this is now the, the reason we have cooperated uh, for the last four years since the Bali uh, COP. Uh, on a very wide global level, we have the Global Gender and Climate Alliance, which uh, Finland has been supporting now for four years. And uh, uh, this alliance is, is composed of 40 international organizations. and. Uh, we have been cooperating very closely with, with developing countries and we have established a fund also which is funding the participation of the developing countries delegates and uh, actually the results are amazing. What are the results? So in, in two years time we, we have been able now to uh, integrate the gender uh, approach, gender perspective in seven programs which the Climate Secretariat is uh, implementing in support of the uh, developing countries to implement the convention. So it is already integrated in the, on the program level. Now I mentioned uh, the three new bodies. So we have made proposals on the governing rules of, of these bodies and finally we are looking to a new legally binding instrument so all the chapters which are under the negotiations so far have the gender element